In this lesson, we're going to look at speed distance time again, but in a different way. Uh, we're actually going to look at something called a distance time graph, which is a completely different way of representing a journey. So a quick review of what we've learned so far. We've learned that vehicles or objects can travel at different speeds. They don't always have to travel at the same speed. Some slow, some faster, and some don't move at all. But also, we need to understand that in a journey, that somebody can move faster and slower in the same journey. And we understood this idea with an earlier lesson when we talked about Usain Bolt. Now, Usain Bolt um, did the 100 metres, but you'll notice at different points of the journey, these 100 metres, he was doing different speeds. For example, the first 10 metres, he was travelling um, slower because he did it in 1.85 seconds, whereas later on he was travelling faster, which is 0.82 seconds. He did 10 metres in. So when we're using this formula that we've used, it's important to understand it's the average speed, not the speeds at particular points of the journey. Okay, so we've used this formula. In the last lessons, we've fired numbers in to work out speeds. But again, what I was saying was we were using a different way of representing this information of a journey. And that is a distance time graph. And our job is to interpret and understand the distance time graph, certainly in this lesson, this is just an introduction. And then eventually we're going to have to try and draw them. So to try and understand them, let's have a wee look at what one looks like. Uh, you'll see one here. Now, um, the reason it's called a distance time graph um, is because up and down the y-axis you can see the distance travelled and along the bottom you can see the time it took. Now, you might wonder where the speed comes into this, but I'm going to show you that. Now, before we look at this graph in detail, I'm going to just quickly talk about something called gradients, which I don't think we've looked at before, but you will look extensively in the lessons in the future in mathematics. So the gradient is just how steep something is. You may have seen signs like this before in the roads. Um, this is how, if you encounter a very steep hill, you'll see every sign like this, and it has a number, value, a percentage, or a ratio. And this is really to tell you how steep the, the gradient of the slope is. So how do we define how, slope, how steep a slope is? Well, you can just look at it, I suppose, um, and see how, how steep it is. But Another way to look at it is to think of this, to think of, if you look at this black line first, to think about the up and down part of this and the long part of this, it kind of forms a, a triangle here. Now, can you see that the bottom bits, one, two, three, four, five, six boxes and one box up? Now, the red line is steeper. And because the red line is steeper, the triangle is different. If you start the triangle up here, that was still six along and two boxes up. The blue line is even steeper again. But again, we can think of that in sense of a triangle. We can think it's six boxes along and one, two, three, four boxes up. So the kind of higher up it is, the, this bit here, uh, the steeper. Now, if we try and apply that logic to this OK, let's look at the red journey first. Now, the red journey has got a triangle too. And if you look at the triangle, I'm trying to draw this with a mouse, it's up and down there. Now, that signifies the distance travelled, because you can look over here and see distance. So how high is that triangle? We can actually put a number value to it. We can see it's 80 miles. So that's 80 miles high, that journey. And we can also look along the way at the triangle. And we can see that that took two hours. Along the way is two hours. Now, just from that red calculation there, um, we can do speed equals distance over time to work out the speed, the average speed that travelled. Now, we said the up and down bit was 80. And the along bit was 2. So we can see that's going at 40 miles per hour. And we can also see that that's the steepest graph, or the steepest line on the graph, isn't it? Right, let's look at the, the blue line. So the blue line is not as steep, but let's look at what's going on with it. So up and down the way, when we think of a triangle here, we can see that the triangle is not as high. It goes up to 40, so the distance is 40. 
and time is still two hours. So again, we could work out the speed of this using speed equals distance travelled over time. Okay, so I did that over here, the blue line. Distance was 40, wasn't it? And divided by 2, so that's only 20 miles per hour. So we're kind of looking at this and thinking, well, the steeper graph is actually the object's going faster, isn't it? Let's look at the green from that. You should be thinking, well, okay, the green one can't be as fast as the blue one because it's not as steep. But anyway, let's look at the triangle. Okay, so this triangle is quite a small triangle in terms of height. So it's 20 high, that means it's 20 miles. So that's travelled 20 miles. This time, the amount of time it took, well, it was over two hours, between two and three, two and a half. Okay, so if you were doing speed equals distance over time, it did 20, 20 miles over 2.5 hours. Remember to change your hours into a decimal. If you put it into a calculator, you'll get 8 miles per hour, and that's confirmed. Yes, it's, it's not as steep as this one, so it's not as fast. So important point to make, that steeper line on the graph means the object is travelling faster, or the car, whatever it is. The last one's quite an interesting case as well here, the orange line. So the orange line is not steep at all, it's actually flat. So the distance it's travelled, if it's starting here and it finishes here, it's not travelled any distance because it would have to go up the way to travel a distance, a number of miles. So it's got no distance. And it took three hours to travel no distance at all. So you can divide zero by three, but what you're going to get is zero miles per hour. So that's not going anywhere at all, is it? Um, it's not travelling at all. So just from the the graphs here in the different colours, we can actually work out what's happening with the objects. And finally, I suppose in a sense, if you were trying to, to work out which one was which from up here, I suppose you would say that with the fastest one, the red one would be the car, the blue one would be the bike, the green one, the slow one would be, it must be the walker or runner or something, and lastly, the person sleeping must be the orange part of the graph because it's not moving at all. Okay, to summarise what was happening there, so this is a kind of note you could put in your graph, uh, put in your jotter, sorry. A distance time graph tells us how far an object has moved with time. The steeper the graph, the greater the speed. A horizontal line means the object's at rest, it's not moving at all. We didn't really talk about this idea here, but if this is a journey, and somebody's going somewhere, so they, they're going somewhere, and they get there, then they stop. What do you think the downward sloping line is? Why would it be sloping down? Almost the distance going in the opposite direction. Have a think, see if you know the answer. So the downward sloping line is the object is going back to where it came from. So say, for example, you were doing a journey to go to Tesco's, you stayed at Tesco's for a bit and you did your shopping, then you came back home. Okay, uh, the curve blue line is not really where we're going to be talking about it, but the distance is changing over time with a curve instead of a straight line. This actually means the speed is increasing, which is to do with acceleration, but something we are not really going to look at.